is finally arriving. We'll make our way to our seats. Why don't we just open in a word of prayer? Would you stand with us this morning? Let's all stand to our feet.
Father God, we just thank you so much. We thank you for what you're doing this morning, and we thank you what you want to do in each and every one of our lives. We're grateful that you are the great, you are our, our Yahweh, you are our Abba Father, and we bring all our worship to you this morning, all our praise, and all our adoration. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Remember those walls that we caught sin and shame. They were like prisons that we couldn't escape. Any king, any time, any rose, those walls are rubber. Remember those giants we called death and grave. They were like mountains that stood in our This is our God, this is who He is, He loves us. This is our God, this is what He does, He saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God, King Jesus. Remember that fear that took our breath. Faith so weak that we could barely pray. Every word, every word, every whisper. Now those altars in the wilderness tell the story of his faithfulness. Never once did he fail, and he never will. This is our God. This is who he is, he loves us. This is our God, this is what he does, he saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God, King Jesus. Who pulled me out? Who pulled me out of that pit? He did, he did. Who paid for all of our sins? Nobody but Jesus. Who pulled me out of that pit? He did, he did. Who paid for all of our sins? Nobody but Jesus. Who rescued me from that grave? Yahweh, Yahweh. Who gets the glory and praise? Nobody but Jesus. Who rescued me from that grave? Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise? Nobody but Him. This is our God. This is who He is. He loves us. This is our God. This is what He does. He saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave. Let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God, King Jesus. This is our God, this is what he does, he loves us. This is our God, this is what he does, he saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God, King Jesus. Amen. Hey, if you believe that, let's give him a hand clap this morning. You know that word Yahweh that we just sang? It's kind of a weird word, right? But um, the Bible, the Bible's very clear, very intentional when it talks about names. And throughout most of the Old Testament, the name that the, the people use for God is Elohim. It means mighty, means like big. It's it's kind of the God that, that the that the world knows about. They see God as this big, massive kind of righteously angry creator 
But you know, when Jesus came, he called God Abba Father. And that's a term of, of real intimacy. And in the Old Testament, there were times where the Israelites, there were times where they, they, they experienced that intimacy. And they called God Yahweh. And when they did that, it was their way of saying, hey, we know you're our deliverer. You're our provider. You're our healer. You're our comforter. You're our friend. And the good news is that Jesus came, and we know he died for us. And he removed that barrier. He removed the need for God to be angry, the need for God to be the righteous judge. So that all, we, all that's left is Yahweh. All that's left is Abba Father. And so I don't know what you're facing this morning when you come in, and I don't know what all of us are going through as we, as we come into worship, but there's a part in this next song that says, there will be no God before you. And I don't want us to think of that as the Old Testament command. We're not talking about Baal, we're not talking about Asher, we're not talking about Ishtar. The gods that we're talking about in this song is the gods of depression, the gods of debt, the gods of sickness, the god of brokenness. And our God, our God Yahweh, He is bigger than all of that. Amen? So let's sing that this morning in faith. Sing with me. And Yahweh, and Yahweh, and holy is your name. I don't want to take it in vain. And Yahweh, and Yahweh. There will be no other God before you. There will be no other God before you. There is no one above you, no one beside you, nobody like you. There will be no other God before you. No one, no one. No one. Sing it again. Yahweh. Yahweh. Holy is your name. I don't want to take it in vain. No. Yahweh. Yahweh. will be no other God before you. There will be no other God before you. There is no one above you, no one beside you, nobody like you. There will be no other God before you. No one, no one, no one. Who else? Who else can lead us, lead us to freedom? No one, no one, no one. Who else can heal our sins and diseases? No one, no one, no one. Who else can walk, walk on the water? Could answer, answer by fire. No one, no one, no one. Who else can bring down the tallest of giants? No one, no one, no one. Who else can silence the roar of the lion? No one, no one, no one. Who else is worthy, worthy of worship? Nobody like you. 
There will be no other God for you. No one, no one, no one. Nobody great, nobody higher. Nobody great. There will be no other God before you. There is no one above you, no one beside you, nobody like you. There will be no other God before you. No one, no one, no one. Hey, let's lift him up this morning. i 
Father God, we just thank you that you are our living hope. That you're not a dead God, but you are alive. You're living on the inside of each and every one of us. You are the Yahweh in our lives. Be the healer, the provider, the restorer, the comforter, and our friend. And Father God, we just thank you that because of what you did, because of your son Jesus on that cross, that we can worship you and live with you and be loved by you forever. And Father God, we'd be, we'd be remiss if we didn't just want to turn that back to you this morning. Just worship you because you are holy. You're holy forever. this morning.
sing a song forever and amen. And the angels cry, oh, holy, all creation cries, oh, holy, you are lifted high, oh, Worship you, holy. You are holy. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We 
worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. I just encourage you, if you know how to speak in tongues this morning, let's just lift up our voices in unison. If you don't have that gift yet, I just encourage you to just sing a new song. Just sing your heart. Just tell them how much you love them. Just lift them up this morning. Just like the angels are doing in heaven. We can bring heaven here on earth. Let's lay down that, lay down whatever's happened in your lives. Lay down the burden of sickness, that burden of shame, that burden of guilt, that burden of depression. Just sing out, yeah. Thank you, Jesus, yeah. We're just going to just keep playing gently. And I just want you to just quiet your hearts. Just close your eyes. Just see that image of Jesus on the cross. Just see his arms stretched wide open. Stretched on the cross, but stretched in the way that a father would run and give his child a hug. Stretched in the way that a friend that you haven't seen in a long time would run towards you with their arms stretched wide. 
just want you to close your eyes and just picture that image. And just let God just work on your heart. Just let him work in your body. If you need a healing, just place your hand on that area right now. If you're struggling with depression or if you're struggling with addiction, just place your hand on your head. If you need that comfort this morning, if you need a friend, if you need somebody to love you and say, hey, it's going to be okay, just encourage you to just reach up. Reach up with your hands. Reach up with your arms. Just give him a hug back. We're just going to sing a holy. Father, we thank you for your sweet presence today, Lord. We declare holy, holy. Father, we thank you that you love us so much. So much. Lord, just give us a fresh revelation of that love today in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, we thank you. We praise you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we stand in the gap for our country, Canada, for our province, and for our city, Lord. We pray for the leadership at every level, Lord. And Father, I thank you that although they may be in authority and in positions of leadership, Lord, you guide and touch their hearts. So, Father, I pray that your wisdom, that your grace would be poured out in every one of their lives, Lord. Empower them to do the things that are honoring to you and are the best for our country and for our nation. Father, we continue to pray for the conflicts around the world, especially that, those in the Middle East and all the things that are happening there, Lord. You've told us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Lord, we pray for all of those people. We pray for that entire country. Lord, I thank you that in our city that you are doing a mighty work in people's lives. Lord. Thank you for the lives that are being touched, Lord. Thank you for what you've called us to as, as a church and as an assembly of believers, Lord. We, we meet together to lift up your name and to give you praise. And Father, I thank you that you are honored by that. We lift up our praises to you. We lift up our voices. We lift up our thanksgiving to you, Father God. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the good things that you're doing in people's lives, even within City View, Lord. Thank you for the praise reports that we're hearing. I thank you for the healings. I thank you for the breakthroughs. Thank you for the financial miracles, Lord. We thank you for families being restored. And Lord, in every area, we see you are at work in people's lives, and we give you the glory today in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, Jehovah. Jesus. Jesus. Lord, I just thank you for the privilege of honoring you with our worship, Lord. We lift up your name in this place, the name that is above every name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh,
Let's just sing it out with one voice. Oh. Feel that peace. The Bible says when we seek Him, we will find Him. When we seek Him with all our heart. And that's the hard part. It's hard sometimes to put away the distractions. It's hard to set down the fears and the doubts. Just get to a place where we just truly seek Him. But He's promised He's always there. Rob said something. Uh, Rob said something prophetic this morning. I don't know if you want to share it, or do you want me to just summarize? You want to try and come and if you're up to it, <laughs> just share what God put on your heart. Um, it's been a long time since I've stood in front of the congregation. I have a a lot of things to tell you, but. That'll be another day. Um, today, as I was praying over the chairs, what came through really loud and clear was mixed crop. There's a, a number of people in this congregation that have sowed and sowed and sowed. The only problem is as the crop matured, they didn't harvest it. And now they've got wheat, oats, barley, rye, canola, all mixed together. And what we need is discernment, wisdom, grace, and mercy to, to dis, uh, separate those crops so that we can harvest them properly. So that we can just uh, enjoy the the blessings that God has stored up for us and brought forth. So I just uh, encourage you, if you've sown and 
given an assignment, call in that assignment. Amen. Call it in in Jesus' name. You know, a lot of times, like Rob says, there's a harvest out there, and the harvest is ripe, but we're not we're not receiving it, right? God's waiting to bless us. He's waiting to pour out things in our lives, and we need to reach out by faith and receive it, right? So today, Father God, we receive by faith. We receive all that you have for us and all that people have sown, whether that be financially or in any way. Maybe they've sown with their time. Maybe they've sown into other people's lives. Maybe they've sown just love and encouragement. Father, I just claim a harvest back, a hundredfold harvest for everyone, Lord. We draw off of those heavenly bank accounts that we've been building up in Jesus' name, but we call it in today in Jesus' name. Let that harvest come forth in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you need to receive what God has for you. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Bless you. Okay, hallelujah. Well, thank you. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah. Jesus. You know, uh, um, I'll just take a second while Pastor Gene's kind of coming to join me and I just want to say thank you thank you thank you again for uh, being so faithful in giving and uh, I know that we're we're working we're, we hope to have it released soon in case you've been if anybody's clicked on the link in the emails recently you've been directed to a different place it's called nucleus giving and uh, we're we want to shift over to that for for people that are using credit cards for their giving, the, the Nucleus has lower charges, lower fees and stuff. And th not that that's a big deal, but it's just, it's an easy way for you to, you know, give and um, give to your, give to the church to help out with things and to, to be faithful with God's put in your heart. And then, of course, there's the e-transfers. We see those coming in all the time. That's awesome and because that doesn't cost us anything at all. And then, of course, for people who like to give by uh, cash or checks, we still have the offering box over on the side there. And uh, thank you. In whatever way you choose to give, I thank you. You are a blessing. And you know what? God, what God's called us to, I mean, Pastor Gene and I have been, like for a while we were saying, oh, well, you know, someday we'll get a building. And it's kind of like, okay, wait a minute. We need to start calling it in now. <laughs> we need to start calling. I mean, I we appreciate them here at Royal Gardens. They're a blessing. It's wonderful that we get to use this place. But how much nicer would it be to have our own place, right? And so let's just agree together that the right place at the right price would come together for us and we'd be able to serve God seven days a week in that location. Amen? Praise God. Go ahead. I just want to encourage you today that uh, when we talk about giving and receiving our harvest, it's not just from money. If, like we, you know, that was touched on. But I just want to encourage you if you, if you so work, you help someone, claim a harvest back on that. God is a, a God of blessing. Amen. If you come and you serve and you help, or you help a neighbor. That's, that's also part of giving. Amen? And, and before you know it, God blesses you sometimes in a different way. But he's always looking to bless. And I just want to encourage you that you are a giving church. You really are. But you also give in other ways other than just money. And we appreciate that so much because you know what? We need a team to be able to move forward. Amen? Like... If no one ever showed up and, you know, there was no greeters, there was no one to do coffee, I mean, it'd be okay. No one ever set up the chairs. Well, I guess we could set up our own chair. <laughs> but you know what? It's a blessing. And we're so thankful that we can work together. Amen? As a team. So you're all very, very appreciated. Thank you. Um, this coming week, we've got lots of things happening. But first, tonight, we have what? upper room amen and it's a powerful time i just want to encourage you don't miss out don't miss out on what the holy spirit wants to do in your life and also you can pray for others as well i find that the greatest thing is to come and 
see what God is saying to someone else. It's very, it's very special. So come on out. It's at 7 o'clock at the Katrina's house. If you don't have their address, it was on the sheets. But if you don't have it, just come some after church, and they'll welcome you there. And Bryce always brings a powerful message and from the heart of God. Amen. So we don't want to miss that. Amen. And then also, um, all of you um, were given out these little little cards. They're not quite as um, nice as our Donnie does them, but we got them done. <laughs> There, we just want to thank um, Cal has been doing a lot of our, our media and creating these awesome little cards, and we want to just thank her for that. Donovan does a lot of the printing, and we're so grateful for that. But we wanted you to have these. I know they're a little bit flimsy, but you can still tuck them away and give them and give them to someone. Um, I'm not That's sure. if you want to give somebody something physical about Prophet yeah. Rich coming on Saturday but and Sunday. We'll also but send out go, an email. Go to our Facebook page okay. and yeah. just share the yeah, link. Share, the, share link. the link. Repost and actually, it. when you're at our it's, Facebook it's page, on there. Yeah, yeah, like make sure you like it and share it because we need to. Um, you guys have different contacts than we do. Amen. Lots of people don't even realize we have a church Facebook. Well, we do. So go and find it and then share it. <laughs> Amen. All right, and um, also this coming week, um, member, even though pa Prophet Rich is coming, um, what is this Sunday? What's it called? Super Sunday. Super Sunday, Super Sunday, right? I handed out some cards this week, and it was actually really fun to people I didn't know. Like when we went out for dinner, I just wrote on the bottom, you know, thank you for your service. We'd love to invite you to come. And I just laid it on the counter. It, it was not intimidating at all, right? You can give it to someone, or you can just lay it somewhere. Write a little note. Get these out there. That's why they're on the seats, okay? So we want everyone to take one, and there's more at the front. At the front, But promise me that everyone will at least hand out one. Will you hand out one this week? I don't see any hands. Anyone? Anyone? T Timmy even put posters up in her building. And, and I love that. So, you know, start getting the word out. You know, people come when you invite them. But usually people are a little hesitant to just walk into something. They don't know anybody out. But if you invite them, they'll come. Amen? So that's how we're going to continue to grow. 90% of people come to church because they've been invited by somebody they know, right? So invite, that's number one, right? But any of your social media, anything, tweets and uh, Facebook and Instagram and all those things, like people are out there and they're, I mean, people have found our church because of Google, right? Thank you, Jesus, for Google. And uh, people, they, they see us on social media. So please repost these things and share them. So. And I get to announce something fun. For those of you that don't like sports, you can just close your eyes, right? Close your ears right now. It doesn't matter. I don't care. We love sports. <laughs> Guess what? The Oilers are in the playoffs. Yes, Gordy. <laughs> I don't see Corey. Corey and Gordy are my biggest fans. <laughs> We're always comparing what happened in the week. So anyhow, for those of you that do like sports and you'd like some fellowship. Don't, don't limit it to liking sports. <laughs> no, okay. If you okay. hate sports, Krista, you can come and you can just visit. <laughs> Um, Wednesday night, we have booked um, the Boston Pizza across from West Edmonton Mall. So that's a good marker, okay? So across from West Edmonton Mall, there's a Boston Pizza. We have the party room booked. We can have up to 30 of us. It's wing night as well, so that's kind of fun, right? And you can come, even if you just come and watch one period, who cares, right? Just come, cheer on the Oilers, but come and just fellowship. And then you can, you know, stay as long as you want. But everyone can come. It should be fun, right? So okay. I, let me just ask you this. How many think it's okay for Christians to have fun? <laughs> Yay. Okay. And Pastor Jean managed to get the team room. She's got it booked for 630. Yeah. How many so. think that's a great night to come and have wings? Yes. yes. Okay. Wing night. Now, the game technically doesn't start till 8 o'clock. Yes. Okay. So. But that's okay. All the more reason to come and visit and have some fun, okay? Yeah. Get to know some of the other people in the church or just come and visit and So share. if you're going to come, though, I need you to let me know because we, oh. we, we need to 
just know that we're not going over our numbers. We'll figure it out if we were, but but if you're coming or you'd like to come, let us know, okay, sure. so that we have a count. Yeah, they because they we booked it for 15, but if there's more, like they need to put more servers mm -hmm. on to yeah. help so for the things. So they need to know yeah, if you're coming. For them, so. So. so how many like wings? <laughs> okay, good. Okay, good. Yeah. And how many like hockey? <laughs> And how many like visiting? And I, see, there's all these reasons you should come and join us, right? So. Okay, so, yeah. and then the last announcement is um, two things, actually, really quick. Um, Thursday night is Life Group. Yeah. And it's been a powerful time. It's been a really wonderful time to come together and just um, be in the Word, but pray for each other, expect God to teach us something. Things that I've learned in Life Group I, I just love it. So come on out on Thursday night. Wow. You know what? You're just going to be doing a lot of stuff this week, but that's okay. It's church life, right? So come to what you can and what you can't, that's fine too. So um, the other thing we need to remember is next Sunday is not just Super Sunday, but what happens with Super Sunday? The pot pot bless. bless. Exactly. Okay. Food, so more food. We food. might have visitors. We might have guests. So Please bring enough for yourself and another family. And probably, I'm going to say again, a main dish. <laughs> uh, yes, bring a main dish. If you're bringing a salad, make sure it's a main kind of salad. Um, we don't need a whole bunch of lettuce salad, okay? <laughs> we need food so that the men have enough to eat, right? <laughs> and if you can bring a dessert, don't feel pressured. But if you're able to pick up a dessert or make something, bring that as well. So a main dish and dessert and you know we'll have a couple salads I always will make sure there's a few salads but you know we need some food okay awesome awesome I think that's I think that's oh. good so, so what time is it what time is it oh. if you are under the age of like 10 come on up come on up everybody <laughs> yes of course you are Hi, Paulo. Come on up. You know me. Hi, bud. Hey, how are you? You can dance to the music. everyone good job awesome I am so glad to see all of you today we have some new friends today you guys know each other but anyhow you're going to have a fun story today have you ever lost something have you ever lost something Ella have you lost something I have it's not a good feeling is it well they were gonna learn about someone who lost something and they found it. Louis, you've lost something? Yeah, I know. It's not a good feeling. Not a good feeling at all. But it's all, it's a really good feeling when you find it, right? <laughs> yes. So we're go you're going to go with um, uh, Donovan and Calla today. Miss Donovan and Mr. Donovan, I mean, and <laughs> Miss Calla. <laughs> you know, I grew up calling everybody auntie and uncle. And I still struggle with that because I don't know what to call, you know. An, an endearing name. It sounds so formal, Mr. and Mrs. Wright. No. So anyhow, auntie and uncle or whatever you want to call them. Okay? So we're just going to pray and then you guys can go. <laughs> okay. Let's. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's all hold hands or at least get together. Get close together and hold somebody's hand. Hold somebody's hand. Okay. That's great. You guys hold hands. Ella, hold hands with. Ella? Okay. All right. Here we go. Thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day. Thank you for these beautiful children. Thank you that they're your creation, Father, and you love them so dearly. And Father, we pray that today they would just listen and learn and just learn more about how much you love them. Bless the teachers in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Okay, everybody go out this way. Follow Louie. Louie, just walk. Walk, walk, walk. Remember? You have to go to the bathroom. Okay, go first. Okay? Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> That's so cute. Yes, parents, if they do need to check out the men and ladies room, do that before you take them in the class. It's really tough for the teachers when they have to run out with all the kids. So I think everybody knows that. All right, might be a little loud. It's okay, I want to keep you awake, but I don't want to scare you, so how's that? Praise God, well, what, a, um, what an awesome service we've had so far. And, uh, you know, I'm just believing that God has a word for somebody here today. Uh, I, I want to take one second, or not one second, I'm going to just take a minute and just honor, you know from time to time uh, when someone goes on to be with Jesus, I, I often take the opportunity to honor that life. And uh, this week we received the news that uh, Dr. Jerry Savelle went to be with Jesus. And uh, I, don't know, I think we have a picture there. Um, okay, this picture you say, you might say, well, Pastor Keith, that's not a very good picture. Um, it's not very flashy or, you know, maybe it's not even really good quality. But you know what is significant about this picture and the reason I used it is because I personally took this picture on March the 15th, and Jerry was here in Edmonton. He was speaking at Faith Nation. We had gone to hear him, and I, as I often do with guest speakers, I, I'll pop out my phone and just click a picture, and this was the picture that I took of Jerry, and yeah, I, I don't really know what to say. He is going to be missed his teaching, his encouragement, his preaching of the word, and I know by his friends, um, you know, Kenneth Copeland and, and Jesse Duplantis, they, I mean, Jesse and Jerry, just, they've joked together and teased each other for years, and it's, uh, it's a loss. It's a loss to the body of Christ. Um, Jerry was 77 years old, and uh, if you go on their website, uh, Jerry Savelle uh, Ministries, um, you they have a, a YouTube video there, and it says his last sermon. And I, I don't know, but it looked like it was dated uh, Sunday, as in like last Sunday. I think he preached in church on Sunday and on Monday went home to be with Jesus. So um, don't know any circumstances. I know there's a memorial for him on Friday at uh, Eagle Mountain Church with Kenneth Copeland. And all of his friends will be hosting that. So, And it is being streamed live if anybody wants to watch. But anyhow, I want to just give praise and thank God for the impact that... that Jerry had in many, many lives. So, Hallelujah. Well, last week, uh, Dale brought the word and... Wow, what a powerful message. Thank you, Dale, so much for last Sunday's message. And uh, Dale, um, he talked about the super soaker, right? Oh, man, we need to supercharge our faith. That was such a great picture. I, I mean, the, the picture is, yeah, like my boys running around the backyard with super soakers and hoses and pails of water and everything else that was necessary in order for the ensuing water fight that was about to take place. But anyhow... Here's the best part about what Dale said last week, last week, and that is we need to let the living word of God be alive in us, right, and come alive to us. And it's not, it's not just to us, but in us and working through us. We want to see the Holy Spirit working in and through us. And the word of God is powerful. It is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. So as we saw last weekend, I know we had just heard the news uh, at church time that, that um, Iran had shot a bunch, of, a bunch of missiles into Israel. It was the first, place, first time historically that this has taken place. And they've been blaming Iran for being behind a lot of the things that are happening. But it was the first time that Iran actually directly launched um, any kind of missiles or attacks on Israel. And it's 
you know, part of it is because the, they're a thousand miles or a thousand kilometers away, right? Like it's a long distance, right? And uh, so it's not just like, you know, shooting out to Leduc, okay? They're sh sh shooting a long ways, right? But uh, if I say the word Iron Dome, does anybody, uh, can anybody relate to the Iron Dome? Do you know what I'm talking about when we talk about the Iron Dome? Well, today I want to talk about the, f I want to talk about, and I'm sh not sure that this is the right title. I was praying on the way to church, but I'm going to call it this to start with. I'm going to talk about the Faith Dome, okay? Maybe it should be the Grace Dome, but whatever it is, you'll see as we develop the thing here. Now, uh, in all fairness, there, someone already used Faith Dome, uh, and that was uh, Dr. Frederick K.C. Price and in California. They, we had the privilege of going to Dr. Price's church many years ago when the boys were young. We had gone to, to Disneyland. We took them to Disneyland. And so for an adventure on the Sunday, we went to uh, Dr. Price's church, and it was called the Faith Dome. And the reason it's a Faith Dome is because it's built in a circle. The church is, is in a circle, and uh, Dr. Price, now he's gone on to be with Jesus a couple years ago, but, you know, the church still exists. His son is now the, the lead pastor there. And uh, the, the neat thing about it was he would start out preaching and they had TV cameras all, like all the way around. And he'd start preaching. And I think they probably, like us, have the time showing on the screen at each one. And he would start preaching and he'd walk all the way around and he'd, he'd just keep moving. And somehow, you know, and it, obviously he had practice this but somehow he would magically end up going all the way around the circle and preaching to every section of the people that were there uh, by the time he had finished his message now his messages were not short so it gave him lots of time to get around I mean for all of you who struggle with an hour and a half church service or you know two hour church service I think we got to the faith dome at 9.30 a.m., if I remember rightly, and by the time we got parked and greeted and got inside, they were already doing praise and worship. They were, I don't know how long they'd been going for, but they were already singing and doing praise and worship, and I think we got out of there at 1 o'clock, right? And uh, they were in no hurry to go anywhere. They were there. They were church family, and even though there was 4,000 people, it didn't matter you know, Dr. Price uh, got up and greeted everybody and they celebrated. They said everybody whose birthday it is, they celebrated those birthdays and they honored all the visitors. Of course, they put us in a special section and the TV cameras knew where we were. So it was like, today we have the rights from Edmonton, Canada with us. And we're, you know, we're supposed to stand up and the TV camera zooms in on us and we're on the jumbotrons all around the thing there. So anyhow, they had... They did their job. They knew, how to, they knew how to welcome and make people feel welcome. But here was the thing. Dr. Price was, he was a faith man. And he preached faith his whole life. And that's why they called it the Faith Dome. And uh, I want to talk about a faith dome that we can see. And we can, uh, uh, we can experience in our lives. Now let me go back to this uh, historic event that took place. Um... Now, I think we have a picture. Uh, when we talk about the Iron Dome, the, the Iron Dome basically is a, a, a coordinated network of all these anti-missiles that they f fire off to destroy things that are coming into the country. But I, I did a little bit of research on this and found out something very interesting, and I'm going I'm to run with this today for my message. And uh, let me just read a little bit of history here. It's, I don't know if it's totally accurate, but it's um, the, as best as we know, Iran launched about 300 different drones and missiles towards Israel last weekend, okay? The attack included 170 drones, 30 cruise missiles, and, and 110 ballistic missiles. Now, here's the thing. Um, only a small number of the ballistic missiles reached, even reached Israel. Uh, most, uh, the, most of the drones and the cruise missiles were all shot down before they even got to, like, the border, to the territory of Israel, right? And uh, so I thought, oh, it's their, their uh, you know, iron dome that's in, in operation, right? But it's actually not. Um, how, how it works is like this. Oh, and the, they claim that they shot down 99% of the incoming things before they ever before they ever reached the border of Israel. Okay, but so for um, 
for their in the, uh, for anything that got past the first line of defense, Israel used its aerial defense array, but it, it's a three-tiered umbrella of missile defense systems that they've had in place. And in, in the first tier, the highest tier is what they call the arrow, okay? Now think of this from a spiritual perspective, okay? Israel, like when we talk about bows and arrows and like, you know, when it's, it says in Ephesians that we'll quench all the fiery darts, the arrows of the wicked one, right? That's what Israel has, has done. The highest tier is the arrow, and it's used to physically intercept long-range projectiles. It is thought that the arrow dealt with, the most, with most of the ballistic missiles that had been aimed at Israel. Dramatic footage appeared to show one of these missiles even being shot down outside of the Earth's atmosphere that suggests that the Arrow 3, the most advanced of these systems, is using an, an exo-atmospheric hypersonic uh, thing, b anti-ballistic missile, right? So that's one, okay? But n the next element, the <laughs> I love this, the next element in the tier is called David's sling. Oh, wow. How, how, you know, how Bible is that, right? It's David's sling. I th think of David, you know, swinging his sling around, right? And it would have been used to protect against the short-range ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and drones, taking them out as far away as 300 kilometers, right? So they were, the, the David's sling is the next line of defense, and they shot down all of these things. And then finally, we get to the Iron Dome system. And the Iron Dome is designed to intercept unguided rockets headed for residential areas was recently upgraded to deal with the threat from the drones. However, the Israeli military said that none of the 170 drones fired ever reached Israeli airspace, right? All of them were shot down, right? So what I got thinking as I was preparing my message is, you know, if we're going to have a faith dome, we need to take Israel's example and have there are different levels of, of things that come at us. There are different levels that the enemy comes to steal and kill and destroy in our lives. And we need to be, we need to be prepared for and, uh, you know, plan our defense so that our first line of defense is to intercept whatever the enemy wants to bring in our lives, right? Here's the most important thing that we need to identify. And Israel needed to identify this too. And I want you to know the most important thing is this, is to recognize who your enemy is, okay? Who is our enemy, okay? We, you know, the Bible calls him Satan or, um, you know, the deceiver. He is the liar. He is, uh, you know, uh, the one who is opposed to us as believers. And, you know, if you don't, it's really sad. Last weekend when we had our marriage seminar on the Saturday, one of the speakers quoted this statistic, and I, I think, if I recall, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they said that 60% of modern-day evangelical Christians don't believe that Satan is real. That he's just, it's just, well, you know, just a kind of a sign of, uh, you know, bad things or whatever. They don't believe that he's actually a real person. But if Satan wasn't real, then why did Jesus even talk to and encounter him? And I think Dale uh, referenced that last week when he was talking about um, the encounter between Jesus and Satan. In fact, let's just go there quick. It's in Matthew chapter 4 I'm going to go to. Okay, so if you have your Bibles, go to Matthew chapter 4. And yeah, if Satan wasn't real, then why did Jesus go out and encounter him in, in the wilderness after when it was 40 days, okay? Let me just pick it up. I'm reading from the International, Matthew chapter 4. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted, or the, another translation says tested by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry, and the tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Okay, so he recognized that Jesus was hungry. And he came him and he wanted to test him. And he says, I, you know, um, make these stones become bread, right? Tell these stones to become bread. 
And Jesus, what did Jesus do? Jesus answered, it is written. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Okay, here he was quoting from Deuteronomy 8 and verse 3. So then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on a high point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, Throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Okay, okay, pause and think about this. (laughs) Who's quoting the scripture here? Satan, right? He knows the scriptures too. He knows what they say, but (laughs) but like like Satan often does in our lives, he takes something and he wants to twist it. He, he takes the truth. You know, I mean, this started way back in the Garden of Eden, you know, with Adam and Eve, right? He took what God had said and just twisted it slightly, right? And so here he, here's Satan quoting, but Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Now here he's quoting, of course, Deuteronomy 6, but he's also quoting Psalms 91 where he's talking about protection, right? And again, the devil took him to a high mountain and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written. Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then the devil left him and the angels came and attended to him. There were three levels of temptation or testing that Satan brought. One was on the physical level. He, you know, when, when Jesus and Dale referenced this last week about after fasting for 40 days, I mean, he would have been hungry, right? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know how many of you fast, but, you know, we might fast for a day, you know, or a couple of days, or maybe we go, you know, if we're really, really diligent, we might go on a longer fast, but 40 days is a long time, right? I mean, you all know I, I like pizza. Like, by about the second or third day, if somebody came with pizza, I, like, I'd be done, right? Okay, I, I'm into the pizza, right? You know, like... But Jesus didn't. He held for 40 days, right? And then Satan comes and says, hey, just turn some of these stones into bread. Could Jesus have done that? Absolutely. But he wasn't out there to give in to to Satan's temptations. He was out there to prove that he was Jesus, right? And he wanted to stay right till the end until Satan was, you know, chased away from his presence. So the first thing he comes to him with is a physical thing. The second thing he comes to him with is a protection issue, right? And he even, yeah, he even quotes scripture, you know, saying, hey, well, just throw yourself down. The angels will catch you, you know, no problem, right? But Jesus knew that he could not give in to the test or the temptation that Satan was giving, right? He knew that he needed to stay strong. He needed to to be who God had called him to be and not employ some supernatural thing. And yes, he could have called a whole bunch of angels. He had the power and the authority to do that. Jesus could have done that, but he didn't because that he would have been superseding the calling on his life and the purpose that he had for him. And then the third thing that Satan comes with is power. Wow. You know, it's like, so, hey, I'll, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to give you all the power, all the authority, because remember, in the Garden of Eden, you know, Adam and Eve had been given the authority, and then they passed it to Satan, right? So he legitimately had the ability to give Jesus back the authority and the power. But had Jesus done that, okay, he would not have given his life to redeem mankind. And the whole, you know, salvation, the whole death on the cross, the shedding of his blood, all of those things wouldn't have been fulfilled. It would have been kind of the easy way out. But guess what? None of us would have been redeemed had Jesus made that choice, right? Because our redemption is based on the shed blood 
of Jesus, right? And so he offered him power. Man, how many people are there today in today's day and age that had they been faced with that same challenge, either a physical challenge, you know, some temptation physically or emotionally or something like that, or maybe it was a, a protection thing, like how many, how many of us would have just crumbled under those temptations? But, you know, Jesus did not. He held fast, right? I was reading an article from um, Dr. Charles Stanley, and he said this. He said, you know, Satan's purposes were, were simple and they were clear. And it started with Adam and Eve. Number one is to draw us away from God, to disrupt God's purposes in our life to steal glory from God and to destroy us. And he does this by deceiving and dividing and destroying. Satan comes, and we, we quote the verse all the time, but he comes to steal and kill and destroy. He wants to come in in our lives in so many ways. And so what should our first line of defense be? Just like Israel, if we haven't... They, they, the, this whole uh, network, these three levels of protection that they have wouldn't exist if they hadn't thought it through and hadn't prepared. Okay, so our first line of defense, uh, I'll, I picked three things. Uh, first line of defense for us is to be prepared. Have our radar on, right? If we're like, <laughs> Pastor Gene and I have said this to a number of people when we tell our testimony of how we came to the place and the walk of faith that we're at. It was because we, you know, we kind of grew up not really knowing anything about Satan and not really realizing that we had an enemy. We knew we, I, I, both of us grew up in Christian homes. We were taught from little on that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. We accepted that. I remember kneeling beside the bed with my mom and praying, you know, the prayer to receive Jesus into my life preschool, okay? So like, I don't know whether it was four or five, but it was a preschool age, and I know that that's when I received Jesus into my life. But guess what? The enemy continued to reap havoc in my life because I didn't realize I also had an enemy. I didn't realize that, I, that there was someone who his, pl his plan and purpose was to steal and kill and destroy. That's what Satan does. That's what he comes with. He's after me and he's after you. And if you think that that's not true, like, guess what? You're like a sitting duck. You, you it's like, okay, a sitting, uh, that's a funny expression, isn't it, right? How many know what a sitting duck is? Gene's dad took me, and I was, I mean, I was keen for the adventure. Of course, I was, I was probably trying to be a good son-in-law, right? And so whatever dad suggested, okay, I'm game, right? So I think I told you fishing stories before. Anyhow, so he takes me out to the farm. Well, they didn't, they had sold their farm. So we went to uh, Auntie Hilda's farm, right? Auntie Hilda and Uncle Bill. Okay, so Jean's aunt and uncle still had a farm. In fact, I know where the farm is because we drive by it on the highway when we go to Calgary all the time. So Gene's dad and I went out there and we took the shotguns and we were going duck hunting, okay? Duck hunting. Now, the, it's one thing when the, okay, I don't know if, I don't know if anybody can relate to this, but it's one thing when the ducks are, you know, flying in the air and you're trying to, you know, kind of hone in on them and get them. And if you're, maybe if you're a good skeet shooter, you'd do well at this. But that was not, that's not a sitting duck, Okay. A sitting duck is when they come in and they sit down on the water. And they're just sitting there waiting for you to shoot them, right? They're sitting ducks, okay? Well, guess what? If you don't realize you have an enemy, just like those ducks, if they don't realize that we were there with the shotguns, they're having a, they're having a great day, right? And maybe you're having a great day too until Satan comes to steal, kill, or destroy something in your life. And if you don't realize it, you are the sitting duck. How many can... Re I don't... I know, I don't... I don't. Yeah, okay, I won't ask you to show hands, okay. But that is... <laughs> that's what sitting ducks is all about. We are vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. So we need to have our radar turned on. The verse that came to me is this. 1 Peter 5... And verses 8 and 9, I'm going to read it in a New Living Translation. It says this, stay alert. You okay? <laughs> okay. 
Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. But stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. And it doesn't mean that we're suffering for Jesus. It means that we are all subject to the same attacks. But if we don't stand firm, if we don't know who our enemy is and we don't stand up to him, well, it's back to the sitting ducks, okay? Like we're, we're like, just, he'll just take us out. And the sad reality is I see this in Christians' lives so many times, right? They, re- they know who God is. They know that Jesus died for them. But they don't seem to realize that the enemy wants to destroy things in their life. He wants to bring things to, to get them off track, to get them out of God's plans and purposes, to, to just bring things that are going to just distract them, right? But it says, stay alert, stay alert. Wow, that would be a good one. You know how they, you know, the, 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 uh, the positive, I don't know, I, I got to say this the right way. What's the, the people who believe in positive thinking and positive confessions, right? I wonder how many of them would put on their mirror when they get up in the morning, stay alert. That would be a good, you know, warning for all of us, right? Stay alert. Stay alert today. Stay alert at what's happening in your lives and the, the little things that might come along today. How can I be ready? Be prepared. I need to stay alert, okay? And the second thing I put on my list here was, Engage the smaller missiles. Remember, there were three levels of defense, right? Israel would not, they would not have even known that those missiles had been launched had they not had their radar on and been staying alert. And then, and then it's like, don't wait around. Engage the smaller things and go after the smaller things that come. Um, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. I'm going to read it from the Passion. So 1 Corinthians 10 13 says this. We all experience times of testing, which is normal for every human being. But God will be faithful to you. Let me read that again. But God will be faithful to you. He will screen and filter the severity, the nature, and the timing of every test or trial you face so that you can bear it. And each test is an opportunity to trust him more. For along with every trial, God has provided you a way of escape that will bring you out of it victoriously. Okay? Now, I don't know, I, I, didn't, I haven't done a deep dive on this verse to see if they translated it the, the way that, you know, is that I believe in terms of my theology of God, right? But here's the bottom line. We all go through things. We all face things in life. We all face either temptations or tests or trials or things that come to us. But God is faithful. That's the thing to grab a hold of. And with everything that comes in our lives. Man, as I I stand here and, and I look around, I know most of you well enough to know the trials and the tests that you're facing right now in your life. But God is faithful. There's not one thing that, number one, he's not aware of, and number two, he is not already prepared for you to emerge victorious. Each test is an opportunity to trust him more, for along with every trial, God has provided for you a way of escape. And for the, for the people who sometimes think that God sends things to teach us stuff, I, let me just say this. My God is not schizophrenic, okay? My God would not send a test and then tell me this is the way out of it. That's not how it works. He's not crazy, okay? I don't know, like, we had to discipline our kids growing up. They did things wrong. But we didn't purposely put in their path something that would cause them to fail and then come along with the solution to bring them through it, right? Neither does our God. 
He loves us so much. And he knows that we're going to face trials in the world. He knows that we're going to face things. But guess what? Every test is an opportunity to trust him, right? And will bring a way of escape to bring us out of it victoriously. How many like to be victorious? Amen. I do. James 4 and 7 in the New International says this. It says, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. It took Jesus, you know, or I mean, we're, there are three incidences recorded where, you know, Jesus encountered the devil in the wilderness, right? But eventually, the devil had to hightail it out of there. And you know what? The same promise is for you. This is a New Testament promise. It's in James. It's written to us as believers. When you resist him, what are his options? Exactly. None. He has to go. When we resist him, he will flee from us. Now, it doesn't mean he might not pester us for a while. But guess what? When we resist him and when we don't give him place in our lives then we get the victory, the victory that's promised in Corinthians, and the devil has to flee. Amen. Okay, third thing, we need to respond with authority when the attacks come. Ephesians 6, and I'm going to just jump jump in here. I'll read it from New New Living Translation, okay? Ephesians chapter 6, and I'll just read the passage then uh, quick. It's a familiar passage, okay? Ephesians chapter 6 says this, in ver- picking it up in verse 10 in the New Living Translation, a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. Man, I just feel like putting footnote here for all the people. And I don't know why that would be. Why would so many people not believe in Satan? It's just, yeah. Like, why do they not believe that we have an enemy, okay? This is not, we're not talking Star Wars here. We're not talking, may the force be with you and, you know, the dark side and all this kind of stuff. No, it is God, it is Jesus, and there is Satan. And it's clear. The Bible names them, okay? And so that is who comes against us. Anyhow, sorry, I didn't mean to get stuck there. But anyhow, verse 12, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in heavenly places. Wow. And when it says heavenly places, it's not like there's evil in heaven. What it means, there are different levels of, of spiritual authorities, right? And there are evil spirits that are, exist in that realm. And if we don't realize that they are there, guess what? I'm back to the sitting ducks again. Boom, you know, right? Yeah, just sitting ducks, okay? Let's, I don't want to be a sitting duck, thank you, okay? Verse 13, therefore put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of the evil and then after the battle you will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. We're... We were talking about somebody that was struggling with things the other day. And I said to Pastor Gene, I said, that person needs to get a revelation that they are the righteousness of God. Why are we righteous? Because of anything we've done? No, because of Jesus. We are righteous because of Jesus. Anyhow, stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body of a body armor of God's righteousness for shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared in addition to all of these hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil our shield of faith can stop the arrows of the devil just like the iron you know the shield the iron dome stops the enemy's missiles in the natural, right? Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I love this. Lots of times um, people leave this verse off, but verse 18. Pray in the Spirit at all times. 
and on every occasion stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Okay. So here's, I want to give you a picture, okay? Uh, here's my thing. Oh. Okay, I had to bring something. I couldn't find the super soaker. I have no idea where the super soakers are. So I brought my pellet gun, right? Okay, now, this baby is rapid fire, right? I don't know if I, oh, she's saying don't shoot it. Or, don't shoot it. Okay, it sh shoots little plastic pellets, okay? And uh, I was going to tell you what I use it for, but I better not because I'm online, so I'll get in trouble. Um, anyhow, yeah, the unwanted guests, how's that, right? Now, Dallas will, be, Dallas will be disappointed because I think this is actually Dallas's, but it's in my garage still. So I use it occasionally from time to time, right? So anyhow, here's the thing. We need to realize that God has equipped us. He has equipped us with weapons. He has equipped us with authority. He has equipped us with the name of Jesus. That when the enemy comes... We need to, with all authority and a decisiveness, we need to take up our weapons, as we've just read in Ephesians 6, and go after the enemy and say, no, you are not going to trespass on my territory. You are not going to steal from me. You are not going to bring destruction in my life. We need to take that authority, right? And here's the thing. Oh, and by the way, just in case there's any question about whether Pastor Keith is qualified to be able to be shooting, a, you know, a gun like this, right? I just want you to know that I was, I grew up in the time, and I know Tom can relate to this, and maybe some other people can. I grew up in a time and a day when guns were like, it was at your parents' discretion if, if guns were safe, right? I grew up as a, as a young kid when we went to... Um, uh, I went to Christian. I told I've told the story about going to Christian Service Brigades. We used to go to Camp Teepee Pole out by uh, Sundry, and we used real 22s, yeah. right? And I've shot a lot of 22s in my day. And then when I became a camp counselor at our church camp out at Chestermere Lake, I got the privilege of being the guy who. And okay, this is at 14 years old. I got the privilege of being the guy who was to teach the kids gun safety. Right, and we'd, we like we didn't we didn't use plastic pellets. We used those CO2 guns with the with the metal pellets, right? Because they didn't they felt like 22s were a little bit not safe. But trust me, if you, anybody know what I'm talking about, those guns that those uh, with the CO2 cartridges, and when those pellets come out of there, they come out of there fast. I mean, I could probably do some damage with this, but not like that. But anyhow, but we would teach the kids safety. We'd teach, you know, tell them how to handle the gun and all the ways to be safe, right? But guess what? If you don't know you have an enemy, you won't even bother picking up your weapon. You won't even bother picking up your first line of defense, okay? So I'm going to give you three things that, to me, are our first line of defense, okay? Number one, Speak the word of God. And maybe that sounds like I'm re-preaching Dale's message from last week. So I won't do that. I'll just quote one verse. Romans 10 and 8 in the New King James says this. But what does it say? The word is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. We need to speak the word. We need to speak it in faith. It is the word of faith. The word, the word spoken in faith has power and it has authority. And so we need to get the word of God needs to be number one, right? Number two, we need to pray in faith, okay? A lot of times people pray and, you know, we've had discussions about this like, you know, oh, I'm just praying, oh, pl God, please do this and, you know, please break through and please change these impossible circumstances and, you know what, I don't think, like, your heart might be right, 
But God doesn't tell us to pray that way. It's not, we don't ple- pray pleading prayers. We're not begging God to do something. The truth is, he's probably already provided. What we need to pray is, thank you, Father, that your word declares and that you have provided for me, that you have provided at the cross through Jesus, that you have provided through the covenant. And so, Father, by faith, I receive all that you have for me. Actually, that is consistent with... um, um, I better stop waving this around. That was consistent with what Rob said, right? We need to receive by faith. We need to receive the things that God has already provided for us, right? With it, like, you name it. Hang on. I'll, in a minute, maybe I'll name some things, okay? Third thing on our line of defense, okay? We got those, you know, long-range interceptors, the mid-range, you know, missiles and anti-missile things, and then there's the short-range things. Uh, but the third one I say is this, boldly declare, declare and confess. Mark eleven twenty three. truly I tell you, if anyone says... Everybody say says. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. You will receive things based on the word of God, praying in faith and boldly declaring and speaking forth. Amen. Then Luke 10 and 19 in the New International says this, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Boy, wouldn't it have been fun to be there that day to hear Jesus declare that same thing when Satan came to him to test him. But you know what? You can do the same. You can declare the word of God. You can declare over your situation. You can speak to your circumstances. And you have authority to trample on snakes and, snakes and scorpions. And I believe you know, Bryce taught on this one time that there's a whole bunch of meaning there other than just snakes and scorpions. We're not talking about you know, a bunch of you know, animals. We're talking about spiritual authorities that, that we, have a, we have been given authority over those things in our lives. Amen. And to overcome all. Everybody say all. To overcome all the power of the enemy, nothing will harm you. Okay, one more. Romans 8.37 says this. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. God has already provided victory for you. He has already provided everything you need for life and godliness. He has already promised and guaranteed the victory, right? And, you know, I remember now... I've never had the privilege of going to Israel. I don't know that I want to go there right now. But anyhow, some of you, some, who some people have, right? Some of you have had the opportunity to go to Israel. And this system, which you probably didn't even exist, it, know it existed and how intricate and how complex it is, right? With the arrow and David's sling and the Iron Dome, this protects their people. But you know what? How much more? The Faith Dome that surrounds us. That's God's protection, that whenever anything comes in our lives, no matter what it is, we are promised the victory. Okay, so here's the question. How can we use these things when we get the report of sickness or disease? Well, let's go back and think about it. Speak the word. Speak what the word says about sickness in our life. Because it's very clear, by Jesus' stripes we are healed. And there are many other verses, right? Speak the word and then pray in faith. Say, thank you, Father God, that today I declare that I am healed. I receive your healing. I receive all that you've given me at the cross. And I don't receive this sickness that's come. And boy, I'll tell you something. I'm I'm not saying this is easy. I'm just saying that this is what's promised to us, right? When we feel crappy and we get up in the morning, maybe we'd like to go right back to bed. Ask Pastor Gene. There are days when I feel like, okay, let's just stay in bed today, right? But it usually doesn't happen. Um, But the point is, 
if we get up and say, no, enemy, God's word says this is true. I'm going to pray today in faith, and I am going to boldly declare and confess healing and health over my life. This should be our first line of defense. This should be our immediate response when things come. And, and let me just say this, like, don't wait till the monster missiles are launched against your life. Start speaking in faith and praying in faith and declaring when it's little, when it's, yeah, the sniffles, right? That's when you use your faith. That's when you start using your faith to believe and, and just stand on God's word for, for health and healing. Okay, how about financial lack? Do, you know, the, the enemy comes and maybe it's, a, maybe it's a lost job or maybe some financial crisis has come in our life. Maybe there's some big unexpected expense. So do we go, ah, ah, help God. Like, you know what? I, I realize that I suppose that's a legitimate prayer, help God. But he's probably already provided. And what we need to do is remind ourselves of his word, Right? Pray in faith and then boldly declare and speak to that thing. Say, no, I don't receive this in Jesus' name. And whatever it is, I believe that your provision in my life, the finances that you have for me, God, are more than enough, more than sufficient to pay this bill or to, to deal with this situation. And if it's a, a loss of job or a change of employment... We need to pray in faith and say, God, I thank you today that you have a supernatural job that is better than the one that I have now. And I'm believing you for it. I mean, we've heard testimonies of that. I could call people up here to give testimonies, but you know what I'm saying? God always wants to look out for his kids. But you know what? He's probably already provided it. We need to grab a hold of it by faith. We need to say, I, I by faith, declare that I am prosperous, that, I, that all my needs are met according to your riches and glory. Here's a good one. And this might seem like really, why am I even including it in the list? But how about, uh, how about strife and offense? You know, <laughs> strife and offense is, <laughs> this is one of those little things. It's like those little missiles that come, that when, they, when the guys shoot over the fence, right? <laughs> like, they, but you know what? It's so devastating. We need to deal with these things when they're small. We need to not let, and we need to not tolerate strife and offense in our lives. We, you know, and you might say, well, you know, it's not a big deal. Well, you know what? It is a big deal because you've given a foothold to the enemy who wants to come in and get you off track with what God wants for your life. When that's the whole series that we were talking about, you know, and there was one message that I totally devoted to, you know, walking in love and not giving in to strife, not giving in to offense, right? How many, how many, uh, it's a sad testimony, but how many churches have been split down the middle because of some controversial or maybe even insignificant thing that just divided them in their thinking, that divided the church, Right? And yet, as believers, God has told us to stand in agreement. That's what his word says. His word says, be in agreement. Stand, stand together. Stand in faith. Pray in faith. And declare, no weapon formed against me will prosper. And anything, and actually the end of that verse is, and that every tongue that rises against me in judgment, every tongue that's critical, every criticism, and whether, and if, how should I say this? I'm trying to be real gentle here, but the criticism shouldn't be coming out of your mouth. If you have a problem with somebody, you either need to go to them and talk to them or you need to pray for them, okay? Maybe they need to change. We were talking about somebody this week that, um, that we, were, we were praying that the person would either change, change their heart, change their attitude, or that God would literally remove them, okay? Change them, like send them to work for another company, right? Because, you know what, we don't want to be in strife. Strife is so divisive at every level. Well, I think you get my point, right? How about some of the other things? I, I'll just touch on some. Pride. Pride is where, you know, we're so, like, we're so confident, we're so confident that we're right, right? 
But you know what? The enemy can use pride to get at us, just like false humility and just like strife and division. The enemy looks at that and says, oh, you think you're, uh, you know, so great, right? And then he shoots off some missiles to try and get at us or to try and set a trap for us. Like maybe they're like landmines, right, that the enemy sets in our path. That, w- that we're walking along and we're so confident and yet we step right on the landmine because we're not seeing that our own confidence has, has prevented us from humbling ourselves before God, right? The Bible says, humble yourself before God and he will exalt you in due time, right? Then we see these kinds of things in, in Christians' lives. We see sexual temptations. We see addictions. We see fear plaguing people. Man, these, these are attacks of the enemy. And we need, to, we need to take our first line of defense and stop them in their tracks before they ever get to our territory, our boundary, our whatever it is. We need to say, no, I don't receive those things. I don't receive a spirit of fear. God has not given me that, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, right? Right? We need to not give in to things like anger or jealousy, right? Maybe it's even family situations. Man, we need to go to, we need to get on the offense real fast when it comes about to our families. And uh, this one, this one for me is real personal. But you know what? When we see things that come into families, we need to realize that it is an attack from the enemy. And it might, uh, it might seem like just a disagreement, you know, <laughs> like. I don't know, it could be real minor. It could be a disagreement about, you know, wherever, where we're going for dinner. Or we, we laughed about it the other day, you know, which route to take to get to church. How's that for having a disagreement? Oh, I think you should turn down this. Oh, I think you should. And then you get in a fight on the way to church because you disagreed about what street to take. But you know what? That's, that's small and it seems funny. But you know what? It's the infancy of the things that the enemy is using to destroy families. Our families are under attack. I, it, you know that. I, I, don't even, I don't even know what to say. Pastor Gene and I love family, and we love marriage. And it's not that our marriage is so special, but you, because we had to fight for it in our marriage. But you know what? We love fighting for people, and we love fighting with people, that they will see the victory of God in their marriages and in their families. There's nothing that I celebrate more than when kids who've been wandering away from the Lord all of a sudden come back and come into the fold and come into that place of fellowship in the family. And there's nothing I love more and we rejoice more than when we see marriages restored or marriages healed because the enemy does not like it. He hates marriage. He hates families. That's part of his agenda. And we need to take our first line of defense. We need to take the word. We need to speak to those situations. We need to pray in faith. Thank God for the victory that has been promised. And yeah, does it take a while sometimes to see the breakthrough? Yes, absolutely. But we need to not waver in that. Two more verses, then I'm done. Romans 8, 37. This time I'm going to read it in the Passion Translation. It says this. Yet even in the midst of all these things, we triumph over them all. For God has made us to be more than conquerors, and his demonstrated love is our glorious victory over everything. Ephesians 6 and 10 in the Amplified says this. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord, Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him, that strength which his boundless might provides. Hallelujah, Jesus. Do we want to be overcomers? We need to set up our first line of defense. And when we see somewhere on the radar, and like, you know, we, we joke about this from a marriage standpoint that, Often the women are the radar. They seem to sense things that are going on that like the guys just miss it, but it doesn't matter. We all need to have our radar tuned in to what's happening around us. The things that are happening around us, the circumstances that are happening around us, the people that are around us. You know, hanging around with the wrong people, they're little seeds 
that are going to bring forth the wrong harvest, right? Giving, giving in to, you know, oh, it's just a little temptation, right? The verse uh, I, the, that, I didn't look it up, but the verse that Pastor Gene and I were talking about this morning uh, on our way to church, we were saying that th- there are things that come in our lives and there are temptations out there. But you know what? If the things that I do influence somebody else or cause them to fall in their walk with God, man, it is wrong. It is wrong for me because I don't want to be the bad influence in their life. I don't want something that I'm doing. And it might seem little or insignificant to me, but if it's something that is a a trap for someone else, I don't want to allow those missiles to come in. I don't want to allow those bullets to come across my territory. I want to stand strong. I want to stand firm. I want to stand on God's word and believe him for all that he has for me and for you. We're believing the best for you. Pastor Gene, why don't you come and join me? Father God, we thank you and praise you for this day that you have given us, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you have promised us that we are more than conquerors. And Lord, we know we, may, we face things in our lives and sometimes may we feel overwhelmed by all, of the, by all of the things, the missiles that the enemy seems to be launching our way. But Father God, we stand on your word today that declares that we are victorious no matter what it is, no matter what those missiles are, whatever those attacks are. We stand on your word and we declare that we are overcomers by the blood of Jesus. And by the word of our testimony, Father, we thank you and praise you for that today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I want to ask you, I I feel like you have something to add, but I don't know what it is. (laughs) Just, Just praising God. Why don't you stand up with us? Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I think we all just need to just stop and pray. And and just be aware that we are responsible to guard our hearts. Yeah. No one else can guard your heart for you. You're responsible for your heart. You're responsible for words that come out of your mouth. Yeah. And sometimes when I catch myself saying something, I, that verse is ingrained in me. It's like blessing and cursing should not come out of the same mouth. Yeah. It's, a, it's the word of God. Amen. Yeah. And it's easy, you know, because he comes with these little, you know, things to bug us with things. And, and all of you have had opportunities I know where you know someone says or does something but you know if you can stop it stop it there then it doesn't spread because you know what cancer can be in other forms other than just a physical thing it can be a spiritual thing and we don't want cancers to be mulling around in our lives or in other people's lives, amen? And so sometimes, there, you know, a person has every right to be upset. But if you can just stop and pray, pray with them even. And let's just stop, stop it. Don't let it get out into the rest of the body. It's, it's, that's our, we can do that, right? And that can be a defense against the enemy. And as we grow as a church, you know what? Or brothers and sisters, do you fight with your brothers and sisters? Of course you do. Kids always have disagreements, right? But we can still learn how to deal with it in a godly way. And we don't have to have it be a big missile that blows up in someone's face. Amen? And I know for a fact that strife is a killer. I've actually seen it in my life. And I've seen where it has killed and stolen and destroyed. And so just be on guard for strife. It's a trap. It's a pit. You go walking along and it says it's scandalon. That's a word. 
It's like a pit has been dug, and you have a choice. You either fall into it, or you can go, oh, no, I am stepping back from that. I am not. And just take it to God. Sometimes it's really hard. Sometimes things, they are upsetting. So take it to God and call someone. We had that this week. Like, you know, someone was dealing with something, and I said, I'll pray. We'll pray. We'll just claim protection that it's going to be okay. Right? You don't have to handle it on your own. That's why we have each other. We're the body of Christ. Amen. And we can help each other. So. Amen. Amen. I, my heart is that, um, and I tried to preach it with conviction today because I don't want us to be passive Christians who just sit there and let the missiles come and the attacks and the bombs go off, right? We have, God has given us the tools and the authority and the power to stop those attacks from the enemy. But it's up to us. We, we need to engage. We need to use the weapons of our warfare, amen, in those situations. So praise God. Um, could I, uh, we never like to close a service without an opportunity for prayer. And um, Nick and Katrina, can you be prayer partners today? And Gene and Vern, are you able to be prayer partners on this side? Is that okay? Yeah, okay. So they'll be our prayer partners today. If you need prayer, you want someone to agree with you, please come and pray with one of these couples. And uh, just a reminder, upper room tonight at Nick and Katrina's house. Please join us for that if you can. And then uh, let Jean know if you want to come to our, um, our uh, Oilers watch party on Wednesday night. Okay. Life Group Thursday. And then share and post and everything you can to invite all your friends. I know some people from other churches have already been asking about um, uh, Prophet Rich coming next weekend. Let's make sure we fill this place with people who need a miracle in their life. We know that he, he loves to pray for sick, but he also moves powerfully in the other gifts of the Holy Spirit. So, And actually pray for him. I, I yeah. got that on my heart this week. Pray for him. Pray that he hears the Holy Spirit correctly. You know, like we're very careful who we allow to want to come and speak into your lives. We don't want something that is not... And, and any time we've ever, we're very watchful, we've heard things that he said to people, they were right on. And that's, that's encouraging, amen. Sometimes people can come in and say things that are not, they're not uplifting and they're not encouraging. I've never heard him do that. So you pray for him though, because you know what? He comes with, there's lots of attack, right? They've, they've seen a lot of, uh, things happen in their family since COVID, but he hasn't quit. It's an example of he hasn't stopped. He hasn't stopped doing what God's called him to do. Yeah. So Amen. pray for him. Amen. Pray for the services. Pray for those Amen. people that will be coming. And pray for yourself that if God has a word for you, that you will hear it clearly. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord. We go out of here today as victorious champions, overcomers because of the blood of Jesus. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank you for everybody that's watching online. Thank you for tuning in and watching with us. We hope you'll be able to come and join us this weekend for a Saturday night at 7 p.m. and Sunday at 11 a.m. Praise God.
God. 